Hey guys, Ryan here back with another video on functional programming and FPTS. In my last video, I talked about the either type and how you can use that to structure your validations. I mentioned briefly there that there are different ways of constructing an either. So what I wanna do in this video is to revisit that point and dive in a little bit deeper to see kind of the pros and the cons of various ways that we that we can do this. So what I've done here is to set up a few very small examples. Each one has a different way of constructing an either. I'm gonna talk through each one of these and refactor them just to kind of clean them up a little bit. If we look at the first example up here, what we're doing is accepting an object in the parameter list. And then what I wanna test is to see, does this object have a parameter defined? If the parameter is undefined, then I'm gonna return an either with the left side set. For the error type, I'm just using a string with the word bad for simplicity. If the parameter is defined, what we do instead is to return an either with the right side set. And we pass the parameter as the value that will be carried by the either. This code is not bad, but there are a few things here that jump out at me. So the first thing is the word undefined. And whenever I see the word undefined or the word null, this is a pretty clear indication that things can be refactored and done a little bit differently to clean things up. One of the reasons why uh, I use FPTS in the first place is to handle these nasty things for me, these uh, types that you don't wanna have to deal with, like undefined and null. Let's let FPTS handle that for us. Secondly, we have this branching logic here. We have a ternary operator that's testing, you know, one way or the other. Generally, what we want to do is to streamline all of our logic into a pipeline so that, so that we don't have a lot of branching logic. Thirdly, we're using these constructors uh, from the either module, left and right. And that's not necessarily bad. It's just that we're not really getting much from these constructors. All they're doing is they're taking the data that we're giving to them and just creating an object with it. And it turns out FPTS has better constructors that we can use for this. So let's take a look at that. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment out this line here. And what I'm gonna do is to open up a pipe. I'm going to feed in it the thing that I care about, which is object. In order to test to see if the param is there, I'm just going to use the same question mark operator. What this is going to do, of course, is to return an undefined if the parameter is not there exactly the same thing that we had before, except that now we're not the ones that have to deal with undefined. We hand that directly to FPTS and let it take care of it for us. So now what I'm gonna do is to check in the either module and I'm gonna look for a constructor called from nullable. And what this is going to do is to test to see, okay, is this value undefined? If it is, then it needs to know what it should set as the left side. And I'll go ahead and give that the value of bad. If the parameter is defined, then this from nullable function will take that parameter and return an either with the right side set. So that's exactly the same thing that we were doing before. Uh, what you can see now is here with the pipe operator, we've gotten rid of the conditional and we've gotten rid of the undefined. And instead of using the left or right constructors, we're now using this smart constructor from nullable. And the reason why I'm referring to it as a smart constructor is because it has some logic built in to handle a little bit of the validation for us. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second example. So it looks very similar to the first one, except instead of an object, what we're doing is accepting an option. And what we wanna do is to take this option and essentially just convert it to an either. So I test to see, okay, is this option none? If it is, let's return an either with the left side set. If the option has a value, then let's grab that value and return an either with the right side set. In addition to a lot of the same issues that we had before, like this ternary operator, we now have this additional trigger here, which is that we're reaching into the option and we're grabbing the value directly. If you've seen some of my previous videos on options, you know that it, there's almost always a better way to handle this. A couple of you might be thinking, well, this is just a contrived example. No one would ever write code like this, right? Well, I've actually seen this line exactly being suggested as a way to convert an option to an either. So this actually happens and there is a better way to deal with it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And what I'm gonna do is very similar to before. 
I'm gonna open up a pipe operator. I'm gonna drop in the thing that I care about, which is the option. In the either module, I'm gonna look for a slightly different constructor, which is called from option. This will literally just take the option and construct an either for us. All that it needs to know is, okay, if this option is none, what do you want me to set as the error value? And so I'll go ahead and feed it what I had before, which is just bad. Let's go ahead and take a look at this last example. This is actually very similar to the example that I talked about in my previous video on ethers. And what I'm doing here is I'm accepting a user that I expect to be defined. And on this user type is a field called verified, which is just a Boolean field. What I wanna do with this function is just to validate that the user is verified. So I take the user object, I check the verified field. If it's verified, I'll return either with the right set Otherwise, I return either with the left set. There is a different way of doing this that I kind of hinted at in my previous video, which is just to open up a pipe operator like we have in the previous examples. I'm gonna drop in the thing that I care about, which here is the user. In the either module, I'm gonna look for a different constructor called from predicate. This constructor is gonna ask me for two things. The first thing that it needs is what is the test condition that you care about for this thing that you have in the pipe operator? And the test condition that I'm going to use is to say, okay, I want to take my user and I want to test to see, is this user verified? That's the predicate. If the predicate returns true, then this constructor will return in either with the right side set. If the predicate is false, then the constructor will return in either with the left side set. All it needs to know is what it should set as the error value. And again, I'm gonna use that. I'm just gonna zoom out here and make just a couple of important points. The first thing that I'll say is that none of the code that we started with was really bad or wrong. It's just that if you've made the decision to use FBTS in your code base, then you might as well be leveraging the pipeable syntax and the smart constructors to to do a lot of the work for you. And the second thing that I'll say is what we've done in all of these cases is to remove these conditional statements and to remove these very basic constructors and instead trade them out for a pipe and a smart constructor. What this has done is to help us streamline the code and kind of leverage the syntax that FPTS offers. Let me know if you guys found this helpful and I will see you guys next time.